Hello, I'm Laura Furiosi, divorced mother of three, and I'm here with my mother, Lynette Galvin, with 35 years' experience in family law. You're listening to the Divorce Course Podcast. Through our candid discussions, we hope to help you through your divorce or de facto separation. We will be answering the most commonly asked questions and covering the stages and steps that you will face on your way to freedom. Hello and welcome back to the Divorce Course Q&A bonus episodes. Welcome back, Mum. Hello, Laura. Hi, everyone. Now we've got two questions today we're going to be diving into. One is on the topic of changing parenting consent orders Uh and the other one is on property settlement and Centrelink payments. So let's start with the children's question. Mm -hmm. So hi, I've recently found your podcast and I wish I'd found it sooner as it's really helpful. Oh, lovely. I have a question to put forward to your Q&A session. It's about re opening consent orders concerning children. My ex-partner and I have consent orders from 2018 and this lady's in WA. He's now moved on and has a child and he's claiming that it constitutes a significant change in circumstances. She's got... We're changing some of the the facts. Some to, of the facts. Protect. She's got yeah. two children. She's wondering whether or not this can occur. Yep. Uh, they've got a mediation coming up, yep. and she's not confident about this, and she's a bit worried, and she's just hoping there would be any advice that yep. that they could give. Okay. Well, thanks for reaching out. Um, yes. So you, the mediation is the first step for for him, I guess, if he was thinking of bringing an application to the court to change your existing orders. Mm. Now, I understand from your arrangements, uh, current arrangements, you have them about four nights a week and he has them about three Mm. and he's wanting to change that to 50 50 Mm. um every week which would be seven days of a week uh, every fortnight seven days of every fortnight that's not a really big change that's he's seeking a change from what is essentially um six days Mm. you're having a to seven days it's one day um if he brings an application like that the court is i I can be pretty confident the court's going to tell him to get lost okay Uh, you don't have to agree to any change the children are settled and comfortable Mm -hmm. um there uh in the arrangement you've got and he agreed to that order um the case of rice and aspland is the one that the court um, often quotes and rice and aspland says that it is in the best interests of the children to not constantly have litigation about what's happening to them. They need certainty in their lives. They need the parents to stop fighting. Mm. They need that absence of conflict and they need that certainty. So don't agree to things at mediation that you don't feel you should. He should realise if he brings an application to the court and you say, I'm happy to stay with the current orders, that he is very unlikely to get any change to the orders Mm. and you can ask for your costs if you engage a lawyer Mm. for that um well she's indicated that she doesn't want to change it no so So just say no just say no in mediation go to the mediation and say no that the certificate says you didn't agree but don't be pressured if if he were somehow able to persuade a judge to look at the orders again Mm -hmm. then i would be insisting on a family report Mm -hmm. because if he is using um i see that he's trash talking you you Mm. think when Mm. they're with you with him um that needs to come out so in a perfect world maybe he would even have them less so that or that he didn't talk to them about you mm. but really the overall damage to the children would probably come from fresh proceedings yeah. so he's not going to get anywhere and if he sees a reasonable lawyer a reasonable lawyer is going to go you know what mate <laughs> for you know it's not like one it. extra day out of every 14 yeah. it's not worth it and the key takeaway from rice and aspland is if First of all, if the circumstance was known um, at the time the orders were entered into, Mm. then it's not something that you should um, be able to overturn. It seems like he knew what his plans were. Mm. Uh, The second thing is uh, the court says, what is the magnitude of the difference? Is it worth overturning everything to gain, in this case, for him one extra one day extra every 14 days? days. Yeah. And yeah. the court's going to go, it's just not worth it. Mm. And remembering um, now that the court, the Federal Circuit Court and the Family Court of Australia have amalgamated, they have this overarching practice direction mm. and their their aim is to reduce unnecessary cost and delay in family litigation and they want the proceedings to be conducted with the least possible acrimony and hatred i guess Mm. to minimize harm to children and families and their overarching purpose is to facilitate 
the just resolution of disputes inexpensively and efficiently as possible. And this is a case that just doesn't need to go back to the court. No. The orders are fine by you. He's the only one upset. It's well, only one day. And no agreed, judge is going to say. He agreed to and it. He agreed to it. He and it's been it. going for ages. Yeah. So the court's going to say to him, get out of our face. Out you get. Yeah. Yeah, on your bike. <laughs> so I'm pretty confident you won't be worrying about anything. All right. Well, good luck in the mediation. Remember that the, the threat of taking you to court probably might not happen, but this is general advice only. Mm. Of course, Mum mm. doesn't know that. And if he does story. take you to the court, um, there's a very high chance the court will chuck it out. Yeah. Um, just say the magic words, Rice and Asplin. Rice and Asplin, <laughs> 1978. Okay. It's a famous case and the court relies on it a lot. It so has they, to be a significant It change. has to be a significant change and one day is not a significant change. Yeah, and having a child isn't a significant no, change. No, it's not. It's yeah. not. And, yeah. and, there's, and we're remembering always the welfare of these kids is paramount mm. and they are in a routine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And unless he's got some burning evidence that this is not helping, mm. this is not good for them, mm. it's just poppycock. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're wishing you all the best. And if you've got any more questions, please send it through and good luck in your mediation. Yes. And we did change a lot of the information there so we that did. we could protect that person. Yeah. All right. Next <clears throat> question, Mother. Less A less stressful one. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> So someone's written in and said, hi, ladies, can your ex claim half of your Centrelink payments in brackets, single parenting payments, family tax benefits, or rental support, close brackets, in the property pool for financial separation? Hmm. So that's a very interesting question. The only way that, so there's a couple of trick bits in there, I guess. Mm -hmm. If you are receiving Centrelink payments, and some of them are attributable to the time you have with the children, then if the children started spending time with the other party Mm. he or she may be able to claim a percentage of those and your children's payments may correspondingly drop Mm. but but i think this person's asking about property settlements yes the only way those things come into account in property settlement is if you've been saving up Mm. but i can't imagine how people can save on centrelink payments well done you if you've been able to what if they what if that is it that they have been saving up then it does get listed as an asset so i suggest you spend it um (laughs) no i do seriously because it was there for you and the kids and if you've been depriving yourself so that you can save up. save up a little bit, it does get included in the pool. If you've done it post-separation, there's, there's a less of a chance that he'll get um, a cl- like a, a 100% or 50% of it or whatever, mm. but it's a very grey area. Okay, the other question is, um, I guess, if, if this person's written in and it, they haven't been saving it and they're just talking about their Centrelink moving forward. Mm, it's yours. It's yours. It's been between you and your government. Okay. And so that, to do so with when him. they do that property assessment for settlement and they mm. go, well, they make this much money and they oh. make this much money, does that get included? Uh, no. Well, Centrelink has a special little clause mm-hmm. in the Family Law Act all for itself. Okay. And it basically it says when making any assessments like as to future needs, because you're talking about Section 75 too, um, so look at contributions, remember, work out the pool, look at contributions, then we look at future needs and we compare, um, the court compares your income going forward, right, and you might get 30000 or 20000 from Centrelink and the other side person gets 50000 from business, your 30000 from Centrelink or whatever it is mm. is counted as zero because the Act says that for the purposes of these calculations, the court must ignore any income tested or means tested Commonwealth pension. From the government. Okay. Yep. So, so that- basically... Uh, you've got no income. It, Zero. Centrelink, yeah. Centrelink only comes in if it's Centrelink money that you've been saving. That's right. So if you've been saving it and depriving yourself of not buying shoes or whatever, maybe mm. go buy the shoes. Yeah, now. buy the kids' shoes. Yeah. Let them go to soccer, whatever it is that you've had to deprive them of and yourself of. Yeah. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. But that post-separation, if you started saving stuff up post-separation, it's, it, you can, ha- if you don't want to dispose of it or use it, uh, you can 
really point to that and say, look, this is all post-separation savings. It still gets added in in that working out what the assets mm. are, but you might get a little bit of a credit. Because so where after. you might have been going to get 60% of the pool, you've saved up that money. You might get 61 or 63%, oh, but if, it's not the whole If it's money. an amicable divorce, you could say to your ex, look, I've been saving this really hard. Can't mm. I just keep it? It doesn't sound amicable if he's gunning for her That's pensions. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So That's good true. luck with that. All right. Okay. Well, thank you for those questions, everyone. Oh, we've, got, we've still got a whole bunch to get yep. through. We will be churning them, these Q&As out every Saturday. Yes. If you have a question that you'd like to put into the queue, just email us at the divorce course podcast at gmail.com and mum and I would love to answer them. And remember, this is general advice. Mum will love to answer them and Laura loves to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I answer, the, I answer the questions that aren't legally related. That's right. <laughs> so if you want to okay. send one of those, you know, I'm totally fine to answer. <laughs> also, if you would like to to join our webinar called do it yourself divorce mum's mm. doing one on that you can just click on the link in the bio and sign up and register that's really good for people who are doing it themselves obviously but also if you've got a lawyer some people are saying they're they're listening to us whilst they've got a good lawyer they're listening to us because it costs money to ask a lawyer the question and it's keeping the lawyers accountable yeah true mm. and and also if you're too stressed when your lawyer tells you something we give you the backstory in the that's true in the, you can go back in the, and re listen or in the <laughs> podcast, yeah. All right. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, we'd love it if you could rate, review, and subscribe. By doing so, you are spreading the word to help someone else just like you. Lynn would like to remind you that this podcast is general advice only, and you should always get legal advice in relation to your particular situation. And remember that the Australian laws may have changed since recording. Mm-hmm.